Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this render in Blender. Welcome to Blender Therapy, where 3D meets serenity. Let's get started. First, I created a sphere and then added a new material to it. I added a Musgrave texture, a color ramp, and a mixed color node. I set the base color to orange and then set the value of the subsurface to 1. We can get rid of the mixed color node though. Set the color ramp to constant. Then connect the output of the color ramp into the subsurface color and into the emission and set the emission's thread to 5. You can then change the value of the Musgrave texture to your liking. And that's it for the first sphere, and we're going to create another one and then scale it up. Apply the scale and create a new material for it. Delete the principal BSDF and search for glass BSDF. Set the roughness to around 0.5 and add a Musgrave texture. And set the value as you see on screen. Next, add a color ramp and then reverse the node, set it to constant, and set the color white to a uh, deep purple. Next, add a mixed color node and set the color to the glass and the mixed node to this one. Connect the nodes and we're done with the second sphere. Next, add an ICO sphere with the subdivisions of 3 and scale it up. Then, add a geometry node to it. First, add a dual mesh node to it and then a mesh to curve. We're also going to duplicate it because we're going to use the second one later. Make sure to duplicate the geometry node tree and make it unique. Next, add a curve to mesh node. Then a curve circle node with a resolution of 5 and a radius of 0.1 meter. Connect it to profile curve and then play around with the settings to your liking. Finally, add a set material node and we're going to search for a nice material in the Blender Kit add-on. Next, for the second icosphere, delete the nodes as you see on screen and add a Realize Instances nodes to it. Then apply the Geometry node. Scale it up a little bit and position it onto the other sphere. Then we're going to poke some mold in it, switch to Edit Mode and Face Selection and then click on Select and select Random. Take the time to select the faces you want to delete to your liking. And also, don't forget to save. Next, I positioned my camera and then started to build up the scene. Next, I created a material for the floor with a Musgrave texture, a color ramp, and a bump node.
Next, I added an area light with a bluish color. Feel free to come up with your own values to fit your liking and make your scene unique and stand out. What's a nice scene without fog? So now, let's add a cube. And then, delete the principal BSDF and add a volume note to it. Decrease the value of the density to 0.1 and crank up the anisotropy. Now I'm trying to find a nice angle so we can see the middle sphere. Then I added a solidify modifier to it and then a bevel. Next, I selected all the outer faces, inset them and then extrude them inward. Then I added another material to it which is a chrome material. So here's what we got so far. Next, I added a point light and some more lights to add a nice feel to the scene. Then, with the help of the add-on cable raider, I started to add a multiple cable to the scene. Next, I decided it would be nice to add some vines to it. Add a Bezier curve, switch to edit, and then delete the vertices. Then create a new geometry nodes. You can copy the nodes that you see on screen. We'll then now be able to draw and then the vines will appear. Then add a set material node and select a nice material for them. I also deleted some faces in front so we can see them better. And then made some topology work.
I also added some more lights and then I wanted to add some vines to it. So I used the IV Gen add-on, which is free with Blender. And I absolutely went overboard with this because I had like 80 million polygons, but it was worth it. Still adding some more vines. Once you're happy with the results, we can switch to Photoshop. First thing I do is I use the camera raw filter to play with the exposure, the contrast, the highlights, and most importantly, the clarity, which really makes a huge difference to your image. Next, I'm scrolling through the uh, color lookup presets we have in Photoshop and then just decrease the opacity to add up light or nice effect to the image. I also play around with the levels, the color balance, the brightness, and the contrast. It really is a matter of taste and it's a lot of back and forth work. Here's what I came up with, I'm pretty happy with the results. And remember to do not just follow what I'm doing and like copy the values I enter. Make it your own, make it like a hundred times better. Alright, so thanks for tuning in for the Blender Therapy. And don't forget to drop us a like or subscribe to our channel if you've liked that kind of content. Till then, happy blending and may your pixels be ever in your favor.